Hello and welcome to Doc Clay's Chemistry Lessons. Today we're going to be looking at amount of substance and reacting mass calculations. So by the end of this lesson you should be able to do the two following things. You should be able to recall the equation for calculating moles given the mass of a substance and secondly you should be able to use one of the methods to predict the expected amount of product given its reactants or vice versa i.e. the amount of reactants given its products. So first of all just as a recap from the last lesson we should be able to remember this equation for the number of moles if we've got a solid substance in grams so that is the moles of a substance is equal to the mass divided by the molecular mass. Last time we saw this just written as mass equals Mr. Moles or mass equals Mr. times moles. We just rewritten it here to say moles equals mass over MR. And just so we have the units as well, that would be moles, which is a unit MOL, equal to the mass, which we will have in grams, divided by the MR, which is in grams, Per mole. So make sure you're using the correct units when you're doing these equations. Okay, so let's have a look at how we do the reacting mass calculations. Okay, so reacting mass calculations. There's two methods for doing this. Personally, I prefer method two, but method one is perfectly acceptable and comes up with the correct answer. So we'll look at both examples and then we'll both methods and then we'll go and look at some examples. So method one is to write out the balanced equation. Two, for the two bits you want, work out the relative formula mass of each side and multiply them by the balancing numbers in the equation, i.e. the numbers in front. And then apply the rule divide to get one, then multiply to get all. But you have to apply this first to the substance they give information about and then the other one. We'll see how that works in just a minute. Or well, method two, which is the way I prefer because it works for all mole calculations that we'll see uh, when we come solutions and gases later on, is to write out the balance equation, to work out the moles of the known substance, then calculate the moles of the unknown substance using the mole ratio, and then finally to calculate the mass of the own unknown substance. And as I say, we'll look at both of these methods as we go through. So we're going to look at this one exam example and we'll apply both methods to see how it works. So what mass of magnesium oxide is produced when 60 grams of magnesium is burnt in air? So the first thing to do is to write a balanced chemical equation. So we have magnesium plus oxygen goes to make magnesium oxide. To balance that equation, we have two in front of the magnesium and two in front of the magnesium oxide. The next thing to do, it says, is to work out the relative formula mass of the two bits that we're interested in. So magnesium has got a relative atomic mass or an atomic mass of 24. And we're multiplying it up by the balancing numbers or what's called the stoichiometry. So it's multiplied by two to give us 48 grams per mole. We then come across here to the magnesium oxide and we've got magnesium, which is 24, plus 16 for the oxygen, giving us 40. And multiplying it by the balancing number or the stoichiometry is gonna give me two times by 24 plus 16 which gives me a total here of 80 grams per mole. I just need to put that 48 in there. Step three then is to apply the rule divide to get one and multiply to get all. So we have 48 grams and 80 grams on this side. So to get to 1, we're going to divide by 48. 
and divide by 48 here gives us 1 and then equals 1.67 that will get us 1 gram but we're actually interested in the question to get 60 grams of magnesium. So we now multiply both sides up by 60, which will give us 60 on the left hand side. And importantly, on the right hand side, will get us the number that we're interested in, which would be 100 grams of magnesium oxide. That's method one. Next, I'll go and show you method two to do the same to same reaction. So the second and my preferred method of doing it is to write out the balance equation again. So here we have magnesium plus oxygen going to make magnesium oxide. And again, we've got a two, a two, and so in step one, we write the balanced equation. We'll put that here. And step two then is to work out the moles of known. Now the moles of the known here is the magnesium. And remember our mass equals Mr. Moles. Or the moles is equal to the mass divided by the MR. And this time we're going to ignore the number in front. So this time we've got 60, which is the mass of magnesium, divided by the MR of magnesium, which is 24. This will give us the number of moles. We put that into our calculator and we end up with 2.4 five moles of known magnesium. Step three then, now, we now look at the mole ratio to calculate the moles of the unknown. Well, I look at the moles of magnesium. On the left hand side, I've got two moles of magnesium, and that goes to make two moles of magnesium oxide. That means if I've got two and a half moles of magnesium, I would go and make two and a half moles of magnesium oxide. If on the other case I was making oxygen, I've got two moles of magnesium, that goes to make one mole of oxygen, which is half as many. So in that case, two and a half moles of magnesium would react with half as many moles of oxygen, which would be 1.25 moles of oxygen. The final step, step four then, well, that is to work out the final mass. And the mass, as we said, is equal to the Mr. Moles or the MR times by the moles. So in this case, the mass of magnesium oxide is going to be the MR of magnesium oxide, which is 24 plus 16. Remember in this example, we don't use the number in front. Multiplied by the number of moles, which is 2.5. And this again comes to the same value of 100 grams. If you're in my class, lessons or tutees, do try and use method two, because it's my preferred method and it makes the calculations that we come into later on with titrations and volumes much easier. Anyway, that comes to the end of the lesson. We'll have a quick recap of what we've learned. So in reacting mass calculations, you should be able to recall the equation for calculating moles given the mass of a substance and use one of the methods to predict the expected amount of moles given, in, given its reactants, or vice versa. 
That's all for now, and we'll have lots more examples in the future. Bye for now.